Hi friends, today we're going to be talking all things vitamin K. Vitamin K is a group of fat soluble vitamins with two major forms, vitamin K1 and vitamin K2. Vitamin K1 is the most abundant in the human diet and can be found in plant sources such as Brussels sprouts, broccoli and kale. Vitamin K2 can be found in fermented foods such as natto which is fermented soybean and cheeses. It can also be found in animal products such as pork, chicken, eggs and liver. Dr. Warwick Bishop. Today I'd like to share a little bit about vitamin K. Well, you may or may not be aware that there are two types of vitamin K. It was first discovered back in 1929 and it was recognised that vitamin K had a role in coagulation of the blood. Now, it turns out that way back in 1929, it wasn't clear that there were two vitamin Ks. That was discovered subsequently. With that discovery, there was a realization that there's a vitamin K1, which is called phyloquinone, and we get that mainly from leafy greens, and that's mainly associated with some of the factors or proteins required for healthy coagulation. Vitamin K2 is menaquinone. This is found in animal products and also in fermented foods. And it's vitamin K2 I'd like to talk a little bit about because this is the one that's starting to have a light shone on it more and more. It would seem that vitamin K2 activates two major proteins. One is matrix GLA protein and the other is osteocalcin. Now, matrix GLA protein we don't fully understand how it works, but we do know that it seems to be linked with preventing calcification occurring where it shouldn't in the body. And one of the reasons I'm particularly interested in that is that we can see calcification in the coronary arteries. Well, it turns out that matrix GLA protein seems to have a role in decreasing that calcification occurring. Vitamin K2 also stimulates osteocalcin, which helps in bone formation. Osteocalcin is found in the bones and the teeth. So vitamin K2 is likely to be beneficial for bone and tooth uh, mineralization. Really worth bearing in mind. So where do you get your vitamin K2 from? Well, pleasingly, there is some conversion from vitamin K1 to vitamin K2. And there is plenty of vitamin K1 because our bodies actually produce it from the gut flora. Trouble is, the conversion from K1 to K2 is fairly inefficient, so you can't rely on your body to do that all by itself. Just like vitamin K1, vitamin K2 is also produced by the gut flora. Mainly the gut flora in the large bowel. Again, probably not enough de novo to supply our needs. So let's think about where we might get it in our diets. Certainly the sort of fatty dairy products, particularly from grass-fed cows, I will mention that vitamin K1 and 2 are fat-soluble vitamins. So the fats within 
uh, animal products do become important. Vitamin K2 is also seen in liver and offal of animals. Probably the way that many people get it is through fermented foods, foods particularly like sauerkraut. But also uh, Japanese traditional foods like fermented soy products, uh, natto. Today you are reacting to this. Oh my gosh! What the heck is this? Spider eggs? Mm. Eh, eh, no, it kind of smells like soy sauce. It's stronger than soy sauce. It smells like paint. And puke. It smells like a stink bug. Exactly like a stink bug. I don't want to eat this. Okay, now it's time to eat it. What? No. Ah, I'm not comfortable with this. I don't want to die at the age of nine. Okay. Brace myself. Tastes like how it smells. <laughs> 